But Jesus is there each step of the way. And I can see the spirit of the, the disciples becoming, becoming lighter and lighter and lighter. Utter, utter discouragement. Their whole framework of theology totally ripped out from underneath them. And so Jesus takes them. He seizes them. Lays hold of them. Never to let them go. And, he, and then he leads them up into a higher plane of life. And you know, as we surrender those areas of our life to Him, doesn't our life get higher? Our, our walk with God gets higher than we could ever imagine. God leads us along in our, our way of life, the things that we do, the things that we think, the people we become get on a higher plane than we can ever get to without Him. We can never achieve that. But He wants us to live holy. He wants us to live righteously. He leads us and places us on the altar of sacrifice. And if we would sacrifice and surrender, then our life would become higher and higher. Praise the Lord. And I can see the disciples now are really starting to get excited here. You can, you can only imagine. He leads them up a high mountain. If you notice here, if he doesn't do the leading, then there's no higher plane. There's no high place. He has to do the leading. He leads. Praise the Lord. But it gets better. He does a third thing. He does a third thing. It's found in verse 2. There, up on this high place, and we don't know if it's at the top of the mountain or 200 feet from the peak. All we know is that it's up high. He was transfigured before them. He revealed himself to them. Transfigured is where we get our English word metamorphosis. It means to change form. And it says he was changed in form before them. The word before means literally in front of them, in their face, in their presence. There was no doubt what they saw. It was the real deal. The, the, the whole color of the commentary here specifically implies he was there physically as a man and suddenly changed form right in front of them. He reveals himself to them. Wow, wow. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became white as light. This is significant. What better way to lift the spirits up of a disciple than for God to reveal his son to them? What, how has he revealed himself to you? You know why we, we encourage you, oh, you have got to be in the Word. You have got to be in the fellowship of God's people. Because this is where God reveals His Son. And we find Jesus in the Word of God. We find Jesus in the fellowship of the saints. As we discover, somebody says, Oh, God did this for me. God did that for me. And we, we rejoice at the praises of what He's done in each other's lives. We see Him better and better and better. And as we read His Word and, and meditate upon His Word, we see Him more and more and more. He reveals Himself for us. Almost as if transfiguring Himself. In our minds, we have to believe that He was a man. There's no doubt historically that Jesus lived physically on earth. But the disciples were, were privileged in a way none of us will ever be privileged until we go to be with the Lord ourselves. They actually saw him change form right before their very eyes. Oh, I submit to you today, as you read and study God's word, you can see him transfigure himself right before your very eyes. You can see him reveal himself to you right before your very eyes. As you read it in his word and as you take it into your soul. He will reveal himself. His word never returns void. I don't have to reveal him to you. That's his job. My job is to bring the word of God to you and let the spirit of God open your eyes to, to see more and more of Jesus. Are you in God's word? Well, these disciples were pretty, pretty fortunate guys. And they, they, this made an impact on them because Peter writes about this instance in the second Peter. Uh, John writes about it in 1 John chapter 1. They refer back to this. James didn't write about it because he was the first apostle martyr. He didn't have much time to do much writing. This is significant. <laughs> you see, if we want God to reveal his son to us, there are conditions that have to take place. The first condition the disciples met, they confessed the name of the Lord Jesus. 
Then the three other conditions that had to be met were listed as what it means to be a disciple. Three commands. You're my disciple. You confessed me. But are you really my disciple? Then deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. These are the conditions that have to take place. They have to take place. Those are imperative commands. And if, if we do those, if we desire to, to make those real in our life, and we tell God, make those real in my life, do what you've got to do in my life to conform me to this, He will do that. He will take you. He will lead you. And He will reveal Himself to you. You can count on it. Praise the Lord. Interesting, the word led, that's in verse 1, he led them up, is in the Greek present tense. The Greek present tense means that it occurs in actual time. Which means the Lord is constantly, daily, moment by moment, leading us. He's, he's moment by moment uh, taking us up to higher places. He's moment, or desiring to at least, he's moment by moment putting us upon the altar of sacrifice. He's moment by moment uh, overseeing the burden that we carry as we carry our cross. It's a present tense constantly happening. Wow. If that isn't a testimony to, to uh, the intimacy of a daily personal relationship with Jesus Christ, then I don't know what is. He is daily involved, moment by moment. That's why Paul could say to the Philippian believers, I am confident of this very thing. That he who began a good work in me will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ, which is talking about the rapture. Paul knew the present tense of what it meant that Jesus is constantly there, leading, guiding, taking. He's constantly doing this. So Paul knew, I'm confident. Be patient with me. God isn't finished with me yet. Because he knew God was always working. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. 